we're about halfway through the calendar at this point. And this is probably the most exciting time for me with photography, besides actually taking a photo. It's, it's when it gets printed and turned into something. And, uh, and here it is. The calendar coming to life. And we're working on a state-of-the-art printer, which for the first time ever in my career of 29 years of printing, there's a screen up here, which allows you to see the ink flow and exactly what your file's gonna look like. It's got the, pr the page count, how many we're doing, how fast. We're running at 13,000 pages per hour. It's very exciting machinery. So why am I at the printers? Why do I even need to be here? Well, as a photographer, we are very particular about what our images look like and what the colors are like. Well, this is the cover and it's looking amazing. So I'm here to do what we call a press check. And that is to check that the colors are how I want the colors to be. And if you're interested in getting a copy of my calendar, you go to mattirwin.com forward slash products, then click on the Matt Irwin Melbourne Colour Calendar 2020 and you can get yourself a copy of this calendar, which over the last few months you've seen some of these images like this one here, this one here, this one here, come to life and now you can have a piece of it too. So when it comes to creating a calendar, it all starts, of course, with the photography, wherever you are. And then that photography comes into a place like Capture One. Here we are here and you work out which files, which is the file that you want to show to the world. What are you most excited about? And then with the calendar, I create a short list. And once that short list is complete, I export them as PSDs and I take them into InDesign. And that's where we go next. And once I'm in InDesign, here we are here, this is InDesign. And this is what the cover looks like, the front cover and the back cover, because this is actually how it's printed. So that's what you've got to do in InDesign, is create it actually how it's printed. Each little box is editable for those who have never seen InDesign, and you can build and create whatever it is that you want to build and create. So then what I do is I start to piece together what are the images that I want to portray the story of the calendar, and in this case it's about Melbourne, and in this case, I've been making calendars of Melbourne for 17 years. Some years I did a, did a black and white and color edition. So I've created almost 30 calendar editions of Melbourne since 2003. So a big part of it for me is this is what the customer sees when they pick it up in the store. They see the front, they see the back. They've got to make their decisions based upon what they're looking at here. And I think this has to look great the back cover has to look great these are all high res files all 50 meg each so InDesign has a little bit of a heart attack when I try and zoom in so not only are we choosing great pics from the last year but we're also choosing what does the layout look like what do the colors look like do the seasons make sense does this is this summery enough is this wintry enough is this Christmassy enough and of course I keep evolving and I keep changing every one of these images has been photographed in, 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 this year, in 2019. They're all brand new. And some of these I've even made videos about. For example, this red one here, I made a video about the 50mm lens. And just as a bit of feedback on the fact that I genuinely do shoot with Nikon, Sony, and so on, uh, this image here is a Sony image. This image here is a Sony image. This is Nikon Z 50mm. This is... Nikon Z with the F mount 85mm, this is the 35mm Nikon Z, 50mm Nikon, no this was the 24-70 F4, this is the 24-70 F4, uh, this is the F to Z mounted 70-200 to 2.8 FL, 24-70 Z, 24-70 Z, the Sony which I used the 24-105 to F4, and this was the 24 to 70 said. So this is a mix of cameras, mixes of lenses, mixes of adapters. 
I don't mind. I use whatever camera I've got. They all work. You can see they look harmonious and beautiful here together. So it's all good. Absolutely all good. So then once uh, we're in InDesign, we go from InDesign and we do the layout. So each page is laid out and obviously we have to get the, the dates right each year and that's something that's meticulously checked and we put it all together into a calendar that then gets printed. And in recent times I've done this thing where I like to try and match the, as you can see, the font color here with an element out of the image. That's just something that I do. So anyway, once you've made the InDesign file, you export it and depending on your printer, they are exported different ways. Sometimes you export it as a PDF, like so, and then you choose PDF to print. Some printers will have you give them the InDesign files and the original PSDs, so then you package it to print, and then you have the files. And then from there, the files are made, and we go back to the printer. And of course, digital has affected, the digital age has affected every part of the world we live in. And this includes printing, offset printing. This is what this is called. So this is not digital printing. We are still applying ink to a plate, a plate which has an impression of the image. And we're still doing it with four colors. Heidelberg, which is the printer that we're looking at here, they are the number one printing machine manufacturer in the world. And in my 29 years of offset printing, I first did it in 1990 with my first card range. Heidelbergs were the ones you wanted to print on, and still today, Heidelberg is the press that you want. And this machine here, I am told, is the only one like it in Australia. And as you can see, the plates automatically load and unload, as we just saw. And that is absolutely amazing that you can do that. Yeah. A hickey. Ah, so there is a lot of you look under the eyeglass. Yeah. It looked like it was a screen. Yeah, right. But it's just dirt, is it, yeah. or something? Well, there you go. Well, these are um, what we yeah, call yeah. make ready sheets, so yeah. this could have been a bit of yeah. a rubbish. Because, uh, bit of goo. So the printer has to make sure that there's nothing on the actual screens um, and so we found something but it was only on the one sheet. When you first bring the machine up to speed you reuse sheets you've already printed on. So now we're running clean sheets and we'll get some clean ones. You ready to look for colour yet? Yeah, yeah. I'll just pull cool. another one. I have a quick thumb print on that one when I pulled it out. Yeah. Some yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. Cool. Oh man, that, they look amazing. Yeah. Far out. You know what I'm going to say. Run it. <laughs> Run it. Run it, young man. I spelled my name correctly. That's good. The year's right. The year is right. No, we're, uh, we're, we're good to fly. Let me put an autograph on that for you. Which way is the right way? This oh, way? The way to the color bars to the grip. Oh, yes. There you go. That's a good rule to know. And when you're doing a press check, you sign the one that you think the colour is correct. Gotta sign it. And that way the printer knows what you want and you've all agreed on the same thing. I'll let a couple of these come off then I might hit the road. So that is the process of printing. And here we can see the cyan plate. And then next, the magenta plate. The yellow plate. And then finally, the black plate. This is the magic of printing. It's as simple as this. We combine those four colors to make a full color picture or the illusion of a full color picture. I still love it. I'm still spellbound by this process of turning something ephemeral like a digital image into something that's real and exists. And the process never grows old to me and I never stop being totally and utterly excited when I see the final product and I see it going into someone's hands and then the joy that they get from it. I cannot talk enough about the value of getting your works printed, whether it's a one-off, a book, a calendar, a card range, or whatever it is. It's an absolute joy. And now in this day and age of digital printing, in the sense that so much of the process is digital, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than it used to be and cheaper than you think. And I'd love you to see Peter from Ellencon Fine Printers. He's doing a great job here in Melbourne, in Fitzroy, making sure that printing is still Australian made, which is fantastic for me 
for the first 20 years of my career, I printed everything in Australia. And then when I made my first book, it was very difficult to keep the price competitive with all the other books out there unless I took it offshore to China. But now I'm told with the economies of scale and with the faster turnarounds on the press, we can consider doing books here in Australia again. So next year, we, you and I, we're going to go through the process of me trying to make a book in Australia. Well, thank you all so much for watching. It has been great to see you. And if you have any questions about printing, would you ever like to print? And what do you think of this process that is still, in essence, the same as it was with the first printing press from 1440 and then the first offset printing was 1875, almost 150 years ago. A template of your image, stamped onto ink, and then stamped onto the paper. We are still literally doing the same thing. It's just a bit more high-tech and a bit more precise, but it is still the same concept. I'd love to know what you think of all of that. Of course, please subscribe. I'd love to see you again. Please share. Makes us all smarter. Please like. And if you want to see any more of what I do, click on the Matto and down below. You can see over 150 videos that I've made. Thanks so much. Bye for now.